and it's on oscillatory motion of whisk elastic polymer drops on slippery lubricated surfaces. And you're already there. But a minute ago you were <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to start by thanking all the organizers for gathering back uh, here in presence, the community working on dissipation and uh, nanotribology, uh, and tribology in general. And in this cross course fertilization with uh, different topics and different competencies, uh, I would also thank for the opportunity to share what we did in Padova. So uh, the work has been done in Padova, entirely in Padova, and it, it has been done in close co co collaboration with uh, Gianpaolo Mistura, who is very sorry he missed this uh, conference, but he is looking forward to come to the next, and he is uh, greeting all co-workers and colleagues. And uh, the idea has started with some, uh, uh, with some thesis, with some masters, and uh, uh, we would like to thank in particular Paolo Sartori, who has performed a lot of work also in the collecting the final data and organizing all the material. Um, okay, let us start with a couple of words about uh, the motivation. So controlling and predicting the mobility of the drops is a, is a major goal, okay? It's a major scientific challenge, which is relevant also, uh, not only for science, but also for a lot of uh, practical applications, including self-cleaning coatings, digital microfluidics, dropwise condensation, and fog collection. Well, the mobility of the drops is actually deeply affected by the subject heterogeneities. So if we look, quickly look to the nature, for instance, water drops can roll very easily, uh, retaining a nearly spherical shape uh, on the superhydrophobic surfaces like the lotus leaves. Instead, uh, a partial impregnation of a surface texture uh, can cause a strong pinning of the drops, like in the petal, uh, in, the, in, the, in the rose petal. And in some pitcher plants, uh, there is in addition another uh, phenomenon, another effect, that surface texturing, surface texturing can be impregnated by an immiscible fluid so that the drop can float on that. So the main point is that uh, from a static point of view, all of these configurations are pretty, are pretty similar one each other. But the mobility, the motion of the drop, is completely different in these three cases. And the way it happens, it is related to uh, not the equilibrium contact angle, but the dynamic contact angle. Uh, if we start from an equilibrium configuration and we increase the volume of a drop, we have that the contact angle is increasing uh, up to a value where the uh, contact line is moving. And if we decrease the volume, we have a similar phenomenon, but the two angles are different, and the difference of the contact angle is called a contact angle hysteresis, and it is accounting for the morphological and uh, chemical heterogeneities and defects. Okay, so if we want to, to study uh, the sliding of a drop over surfaces, where we, of course, we have different contact angles uh, in, the, in the advancing part of, a, of the drop and in the receding part, we have to consider uh, at least three forces, uh, mainly three forces. Of course, the gravitational pull, which is given by the uh, downplane component of the, of the drop weight. And then we have the viscous drag, which is proportional to the viscosity of a drop, to the speed of a drop, and to the volume of a drop to a, a one-third a power, which is uh, relative, of course, of a perimeter of the drops advancing or sliding into the plane. And the coefficient of proportionality, it is uh, keeping account about the distribution of the contact angle around the perimeter of the drops, and the fact that the dissipation is associated, um, it is smaller uh, for uh, um, uh, 
it is it is smaller for um, it's smaller in the wedge. Okay, as the as the contact angle is uh, lowered, the dissipation is increased, and it, it, so in this uh, particular configuration, it is higher than, for example, the bulk of the draw. Indeed, the bulk dissipation is usually smaller than the dissipation close to the contact line. And finally, of course, we have the interfacial forces. Interfacial forces are, of course, proportional to the uh, surface tension between the liquid and the, and the, and the gas, uh, again, to the uh, one-third power of the volume. And then we have a, um, a parameter, a coefficient, which is, uh, again, keeping into account a distribution of a contact angle around the perimeter of the drops. But in the Farmage formulation, this is proportional to the contact angle hysteresis in the form of a difference of a cosine. Okay, the difference between the advancing and the receding contact angle does not necessarily vanish uh, for small velocities. And this is a manifestation of a hysteresis. Above a, f um, above a, f a, cert a, above a certain f um, a certain threshold, which is uh, uh, called a critical angle, uh, below which the, 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 the drop results pinned. Uh, above that threshold, the force balance among the, uh, the different forces can be expressed in terms of dimensionless quantity. That is the capillary number and the bond number. And the critical bond number, it is uh, accounting, it is keeping into account uh, the wetting hysteresis. So given that the surface tailoring uh, has been proven to an effective strategy to drive the drops uh, onto tilted surfaces. Drops can undergo a stick and slip motion across uh, different hydrophilic and hydrophobic patterns and can be deviated uh, by a chemical steps, for example. Well, if you had a look to the poster of uh, Sebastian Cremaschini, you know now that the deviation can be also uh, achieved by using optical path and the chemical step can also be bended. Well, to play again uh, with interfacial forces in order to reduce as much as possible the contact angle hysteresis, inspired by the Nifentis picture plans, effective strategies have been developed to produce very slippery surfaces that hardly pins aside drops. They involve the trapping of a suitable low surface tension lubricating uh, liquid inside the texture. And the lubricant, if it is chosen correctly and suitably, allows a drop to, of another liquid to float on the wet. And so a new class of materials uh, of material is defined, and they are known as liquid-infused surfaces, and they result hemi-liquid and hemi-solid. And the intercalated lubricant, it is trapped by the solid cavities, by capillarities, and therefore there is no direct contact between the drop and the uh, solid surfaces behind. And since the lubricant it is intrinsically flat and chemical homogeneous, the contact angle hysteresis, the pinning due to the contact angle hysteresis, is expected to reduce uh, really a lot. For these futures, uh, all these futures, all these characteristics, uh, this kind of surfaces has been used in various applications, including bio, uh, biomimetical device, uh, bio bio biomedical devices, sorry and sanitation, heat exchanges, and also uh, food dispensers. So in this study, uh, we realized two different uh, liquid impregnated surfaces following two different routes. For silicon oil, uh, an oil, a silicon oil is spread into a glass slide and then baked at 300 degrees for several minutes. Back to the room temperature, the excess of the oil has been uh, washed away with acetone, and the result of this uh, thermal process is a thin porum solidified silicon layer of about 200 nanometer uh, of thickness that we can impregnate with silicon oil. Uh, conversely, with, uh, uh, for, fluor for fluorinated oil, uh, we use another technique. So we use a, a 20 micron thickness filter, a Teflon filter made of Teflon, and we applied, um, we applied that on the microscope slide and wetted with ethanol in order to uh, get an adhesion, a, a, a kind of adhesion by capillarity. Once the ethanol evaporates, the membrane, it is impregnated with fumbling, which is uh, basically a, a, a fluorinated lubricant. So uh, the control, uh, 
the control, um, uh, the, the membrane is permeated with precip thrombin, and the control of a withdrawal velocity of a deep coating it controls essentially the thickness of the oil, in this case of thrombin, that it is retained by the surfaces. Uh, with this technique, it is usually uh, common to, to get uh, a, a thickness of the oil of, of the order of 0 0.5 micron. So currently, we cannot measure directly the thickness uh, of the oil. But uh, in this kind of study, we had a very high reproducibility of a drop motion, uh, indicating that uh, the thick, uh, the, the lubricant, uh, the lubricant um, layer, it is very stable. Indeed, if we try to uh, use the second process, we saw to use the, the, the filter with silicon oil, the, reprodu the reproducibility is much worse because mainly uh, a, a, a not good chemical affinity between the silicon oil and the Teflon filter. So now the goal it is to address the motion of non-Newtonian drops, non-Newtonian drops because uh, on this kind of surfaces, and this is uh, particularly important because non-Newtonian drops are in general very viscous and hardly can move on solid surfaces. We consider a couple of polymers, the uh, polyacrylamide, PAA, a flexible polymer, and the xanthan which is a stiff rod-like polysaccharide, and both of them are prepared in ultra-pure water uh, at different concentration and different molecular weight, in particular, uh, different molecular weight for the PAA. Uh, with respect to the concentration, all the polymers are falling in the, either the dilute or the semi-dilute regime, and since the, since the surface tension of a polymer solution is very similar to that of pure water, uh, it is expected that the drops are clocked by a thin, uh, thin uh, layer of a, of a lubricant. So for non-Newtonian fluids, the viscosity is not a coefficient, uh, but it is a function of a shear rate, that is the uh, rapidity at which the formation takes place. So in a complete geometry, we measure the viscosity of the polymers as a function of a shear rate. And as commonly reported, both polymers exhibit a shear thinning, a shear thinning uh, behavior, meaning that the viscosity is reduced as the shear rate is increasing. And as expected, at, uh, um, and as expected, oh, OK, we, saw, we have also, uh, for reference, we have also indicated here the glycerol um, uh, the glycerol uh, water solution and the silicon oil viscosity. We also measure the shear dependence of the first normal stress difference N1, which is related to the vertical force exerted by the polymer uh, upon a rotating plate. And with respect to the stress tensor, the N1, it is the, uh, the difference between the diagonal term and it is, of course, uh, it is of course uh, zero for a, a Newtonian fluid and positive for an elastic fluid. And in agreement with literature, N1 increases quadratically with a shear rate and increases, uh, uh, of course, with the polymer concentration. OK, as for the wetting properties, they are quite similar uh, to, the, um, to the contact angle of the pure, of the pure water. So the motion of the drops is acquired using a custom-made uh, setup, and the sample is mounted on a rotating uh, support, whose inclination can be set with an accuracy of 0 0.5 degree. The drops of a volume which is in the range between 10 and 40 microliters can be, uh, are those with, uh, with a micropipette, and are illuminated by a white LED backlight. The lateral profile of the drop is imaged in time by a fast camera, mounted along the rotational axis of a stage. And with respect to the titled plane, we indicate uh, the um, front contact point, the one which is downhill the drop. So let's have a look to the motion of this drop. So the movie clearly shows that an, oscill an oscillatory behavior of a instantaneous speed and a periodic motion of a deformation around the semicircular profile. And since we are in Trieste, to pay tribute, we prepare the polymeric coffee. And the, uh, the ground coffee particles added to the solution highlight the internal rolling motion of the drop. So it is not a pure sliding. 
uh, well, a sequence of a snapshot extracted from the movie is that the drop profile, it is not stationary. And there is a bulge moving around the drop perimeter during the motion. So let's go ahead and let's study the time evolution of the front position of the contact line of different drops. Uh, most of the data are taken with silicon oil, uh, with, a, a nominal, uh, with a nominal lubricant thickness of approximately 3 uh, microns. So the blue curve, it is the, the glycerol uh, water mixture, the, the, the glycerol, uh, the Newtonian fluid. And is expe as expected, it is linear like the other Newtonian liquids. One important thing that it is despite the much higher static viscosity, meaning at zero shear, the average speed of polyacrylamide at 10 um, uh, with a molecular uh, weight of uh, uh, 10,000 uh, gram per mole, um, 10, 1 to the, one to, the uh, to the 7 gram per mole, a concentration below 2,000 and um, 2,500 ppm is comparable to that of the glycerol uh, uh, water drops. And this is because, um, basically, due to the shear thinning, uh, the, what it is happening, it is the viscosity of the oil, it is resulting um, greater than the one of the polymer. And in this kind of motion, if the viscosity of the oil it is greater with respect to the drop, the dissipation it is taking place into the uh, lubricant oil. And that's why all these cores are more or less the same. And the noise, it is just because we use different uh, surfaces, so uh, maybe it is related to the presence of different thickness of a lubricant oil. And the uniform motion of uh, glycerol and also the uh, polyacrylamide at low molecular weight is better shown by subtracting the linear trend and plotting the instantaneous variation of the front and the rear contact points with respect to the feet. As expected from the logical characterization, uh, this kind of drop exited the same uniform motion as glycerol. However, as the molecular weight of a polyacrylamide is increased, oscillation starts to appear. And the most evident oscillation are the ones related to the concentration or the, the intermediate molecular uh, weight for the polyacrylamide and the concentration of 5,000 ppm. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, uh, uh, the situation where we extracted the, um, the snapshot that you see just before. Conversely, if the molecular weight is far from increased, oscillation appears damped and irregular. Uh, for the xantan, xantan displays a weak yet non-null oscillation as well. And here we want to stress that this kind of non-uniform motion it is very unlikely due to the uh, surfaces, which is a, a homogeneous, perfectly homogeneous surfaces. Uh, to complete the story, we did the same with fluorinated oil, and to make the story short, uh, uh, we just recovered more or less the same, uh, the same uh, results, confirming that uh, there is no a role, uh, a role played by, uh, by the surface. The surface is pretty homogeneous, independently from the kind of a realization for different surfaces. And so uh, this kind of oscillation are uh, basically due to the, um, the properties of the polymer itself. For both polymers, we have plotted the frequency uh, of a periodic oscillation as a function of the mean drop speed having different volumes uh, on surface tighted for different angles. And it emerges a clear proportionality between the frequency and the speed and this confirms that the oscillations are related to the motion of a bulge of a drop in the, in, in the drop profile. Uh, the inverse of the slope uh, of interpolating dashed uh, of a, of a interpolated dashed line, yes, uh, yields a characteristic length. And this length, it is surprisingly very, very similar to the free perimeter of a drop. Indeed, if we plot uh, not the frequency, but the product of the frequency uh, times the perimeter as a function of the speed, we get a master curve, and uh, a master curve with a slope which is equal to one with no free parameter. So basically, the time law, it is the one that 
it can be uh, observed by uh, a mechanical system. But of course, uh, the, uh, the explanation, it is completely different, and it is related to the uh, Weisenberg uh, effect. Uh, very, very quickly, here in the, in the, it is the last slide, here in the rear, in the wedge of a, of a drop, uh, the shear rate, it is particularly great, uh, particularly uh, important, and so the elastic effect, which is N1, it is important as well, and so uh, there is the formation, due to the elasticity of the polymer, there is an extra tension uh, which is uh, uh, forming uh, the bulge in the rear. And then when the bulge it is formed, the periodical motion, it is just a, a matter of conversion of uh, kinetical and potential energy during the motion. So I have concluded, and uh, uh, just to uh, resume the take-home messages, uh, oscillations have been detected in the presence of defect-free surfaces, elastic uh, uh, properties, and also uh, uh, the presence of, a, of a homogeneous surfaces are important to observe this phenomena. But of course, the story is not complete, and so we, will, we would be happy to, to collect the idea to, to, to give a, a comprehensive and a definitive explanation of the phenomena. Thank you very much, all of you, for the attention. Thank you very much indeed for this clear presentation, which I hope has answered most of the questions we may have had because we used up our time. And we will sort of postpone all questions to the coffee break. Thank you very much. Uh, OK, our next speaker is uh, Thomas Heimek. He's uh, coming to us uh, from a sort of different field. We have not heard about membranes today and yesterday. And, but there's, of course, fluctuations and relative.